I've been working a lot on my color grading over the years to get closer to a cinematic look. And if I had the time and budget, I could get pretty amazing results already some time ago. But that's the problem if you want to publish regular content on YouTube and social media. There's not much time and the budget is limited. So I was constantly looking for a workflow that gives me a look that I'm happy with and that makes my color grading super fast. Let's see what I came up with and at the end of the video I will also show you an incredible tool that makes cinematic color grading even easier, especially for beginners. Important to understand when it comes to color grading quickly is that the color grading process starts in your camera, because that's where the raw sensor data is processed into your chosen picture profile. So everything you do right in your camera saves you time on the computer and everything you do wrong can easily mean a lot of frustration. I learned that the hard way because I did a lot of mistakes over the years which took me countless hours in the edit to fix, so to save you this time let's see what to look for. The first and probably most important setting is white balance. I know it looks complicated at first, but it's actually quite easy. To make it really simple, just set your white balance via the presets in your camera. Most important here are sunny, cloudy and shade, so depending on the conditions you simply choose the one that fits. If you shoot inside your room, make sure that you use proper studio lighting with daylight color temperature and you can also set your white balance to sunny. If you don't have studio lights, use a daylight color temperature light bulb or set the camera to automatic. Alternatively, you can set the white balance in your camera in numbers where 5600 Kelvin is good for sunny days and 6500 for cloudy days. But if you absolutely want to nail your white balance, you should get a gray card because they are super cheap and the most accurate way to white balance your shots. And it's especially good if you work with ND filters, especially variable ND filters, because they usually add a tint to your image and a gray card can correct for that directly so you don't have to do that in post. It's also not complicated to use, just put the gray card wherever your main subject will be in the shot, then select custom in your white balance settings, put the square on the screen over the gray card, press OK and the camera will automatically set the white balance correctly. The other camera setting you have to get right is your exposure, but as long as you don't shoot in lock you can just check if it looks good on your display and it should be fine. Now if you shoot in lock it depends a bit on the camera and specific lock profile but you generally want to overexpose it a bit. For Sony users I made a tutorial on S-Log3 but if you use other cameras just search on YouTube for information about your specific camera and lock profile. Now especially if you have a cheaper camera it can also make sense to choose a picture profile that comes close to the colors you like. But overall that's a creative choice, so just spend a few days with your camera to really find out which picture profile you like and if you should unlock, find the settings and some conversion LUTs that work for you. And that's actually what I do every time when I get a new camera. I really go out for a few days, I try out different picture profiles, all the settings, codecs and how I expose certain picture profiles because I know that that will save me a lot of time in the long term because I have to spend less time color grading and fixing eventual issues with the footage. Okay, that's all you need to know to set up your camera properly, but let's come to the actual color grading. I start by applying a conversion LUT to my lock footage and a conversion LUT is there to convert the flat lock colors to normal looking Rec 709 colors. So just after this step the image usually looks quite good already. If not, then I apply a three-way color correction before the LUT gets applied and I adjust the exposure of the clip until it looks good. You will find conversion LUTs for free on the website of your camera manufacturer and also paid conversion LUTs all across the internet. For my Sony S-Log3 footage, I use the Phantom LUTs from Joel Famulero as they bring the colors close to Arri cinema cameras. But if you didn't shoot in lock, you can skip the conversion LUT and just use the three-way color correction to adjust your highlights, midtones and shadows until you're happy with the image. In case you set the white balance wrong in camera, you can simply apply a draw mask on parts of the skin in your shot and then you can see in your vector scope if it's on the skin tone indicator line or not. If not, simply use the temperature and tint control to bring it onto the line, but better set it right in camera as I showed you before. To add more contrast to your clip, you can create an S-curve by using the color curves tool from Final Cut. Just adjust the curve until you're happy with the result. After that, I just apply a creative LUT or also known as finishing LUT. Such LUTs create a final look, so they are not made for specific cameras, but they work with all of them. Usually these LUTs are a bit too strong, so I use the intensity slider to bring it to the look I want. 
There are thousands of creative LUTs all over the internet. I sell for example my Tain LUT pack in my shop for this part of the process. But you can use any LUT you want, just look what your favorite creators or companies offer. Of course, I oftentimes do a bit more tweaking after applying the creative LUT, but that requires more knowledge about color grading and it takes a bit more time. So most of the time you will be fine by just using a creative LUT, but if you want to learn more about color grading, check out my color grading course, the link is in the description below. But there is an even quicker and easier way to create really cinematic looking videos without any knowledge about color grading and that works via a plugin called Film Convert. I use Film Convert already for multiple years, first with the standard version and recently I upgraded to Film Convert Nitrate, which I like even more because it's a bit more flexible. In both cases I paid the full price, but recently Film Convert saw my channel and asked me for a collaboration. So yes, this video is sponsored by Film Convert, but the fact that I already used and paid twice for it before clearly shows that I genuinely love their product, so let me show how it works. Okay, in Film Convert Nitrate you first tell the plugin which camera and picture profile you used. I used the Sony A7S III with the S-Log3 S Gamut 3 Cine profile, so I select that and boom, it instantly looks good. Of course there are a few more settings as you can see, so let's see what you can do with them. Here in the second section you see exposure, temperature and tint, which is great for some quick tweaks in case your exposure and white balance is off. This shot could be a little bit darker, so I drag the exposure slider down a little bit and it also feels a bit purple, so I drag the tint slider to the left to remove that. Now Film Convert tries to emulate analog film as good as possible and that's what the next section is all about. Here I can select the film stock emulation at first, the standard is Kodak 5207 with 3 which usually does a good job, but let's also have a look at the others. The FJ stands for Fujifilm, which I'm a big fan of, so let's use Fuji 8553ET to emulate an Eterna film stock. And I would say that looks pretty good. Below that you also find two other sliders to make some fine tweaks. And here I usually let the first slider at 100, but sometimes the image can be a bit too contrasty, so in that case I drag the second slider to the left until it looks good. Then there's also the grain response section to add film grain. If you like film grain, you can play around with that, but I don't like film grain or any noise at all, so I deactivate it and we get the film look without its imperfections. Further down you find some more correction tools that you already know from Final Cut itself. So if you want to make more tweaks to the image, you can use those as well. Here I could for example bring the highlights down a bit more and then a slight S curve for more contrast. So that's how quick and easy I get really nice and cinematic looking footage with Film Convert and another good thing about it is that it also makes matching shots from different cameras quite easy because of all the camera profiles. It's also available with Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere and it works natively on M1 Max. so to really speed up your color grading and to bring it to the next level, it doesn't matter what video editor you use, definitely check them out, I will leave a link in the description below. So, as you could see in this tutorial, there was no big messing around with fixing colors or so and the reason is that I spent a bit more time during the shoot to get everything right. So if there's one takeaway for you from this video, then it should be to nail everything as good as possible in camera because no matter how you color grade, this will always speed things up a lot. And another takeaway from this video should be to subscribe to my channel. There are actually some people that don't take this opportunity, maybe because they just don't see the button on the bottom of this video and that means that they miss out on a lot of great content and tips. So don't be one of them, the subscribe button is on the bottom of this video again, so click it now and ring the bell and I'll see you again next week.